You heard it here first. Part two of the movie Hustle is being filmed in Toronto, and it's a blockbuster film you're not going to want to miss. Raptor president Masai Ujiri already stole Otto Porter Jr. from the reigning champion Golden State Warriors and Christian Coloco with the 53rd overall pick. The GM wizard wasn't done there, as now Ujiri's stolen Stanley Sugarman's most prized possession in Bo Cruz. Juan Hernan Gomez is far from just the most famous actor across the NBA, as when given a legit chance, the Spaniards proved to be a productive player. Two years ago, during a 14-game span in Minnesota, the T-Wolves gave Juan a shot, and the movie star averaged 13 points, 5 rebounds, and a steal on 5 three-point attempts per game, while making a stellar 42% of those triples. Quietly having become a 7-year NBA veteran, Juan still has some untapped potential, as he's only about to turn 27 years of age in late September. Toronto needed scoring off the bench more than anything, and while the newest Raptor is going to have some heavy internal competition with the roster already consisting of Siakam, Barnes, Ananobi, and now Porter Jr. at the forward spot, Juancho's 7-foot wingspan fits right in, so that should make him a regular in the rotation, assuming he isn't a liability on defense. Regardless, the developing and potential East contending Raptors are the perfect team for a player looking to stick around in the league like Hernan Gomez, so how much does Toronto's 2023 potential increase with the addition of Bo? Stay tuned to find out. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 15.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the sub box for more content like this every single day if you haven't already. Help this video and YouTube's algorithm by leaving a like, and make sure you're following me on Instagram at dflowhoops. I can't thank you enough for any bit of support. Now into the content. Bo Bichette is no longer the most famous Bo in Toronto, with the former Boston Celtic Bo Cruz taking a flight to the 6 to be introduced as a Raptor. Jokes relating to the basketball movie of the decade hustle aside, and Juan Hernan Gomez deserves some praise for what he can legitimately provide between the lines. Nicknamed Wancho, Hernan Gomez is a 6'9", 220-pound versatile forward capable of switching defensively in the pick and roll. That length, agility, and of course switchability on defense is likely the driving factor which attracted the Raptor franchise to the European. If you follow this Toronto organization over the last half decade plus, you're well aware that having quick feet, hustling, and most importantly having a wide wingspan are crucial elements a player needs to provide if they're going to be on the roster. Juancho doesn't merely check those boxes, but adds the element of floor spacing on the other end. As the guy's got the ability to stretch the opposing defense with a jumper, that's another massively important trait which he'll be blessing fans in the North with. It's honestly insane this man was still on the free agent market, because most recently with the Utah Jazz, he shot 51% from the fields and made 44% of his three shots from beyond the arc per night. Sure, he only averaged 6 points in 17 and a half minutes, but the efficiency proves the guy's a high IQ player who doesn't force things too much. Considering that, and the fact that whether he's shooting the ball or not, he's drawing defenders away from the paint with the threat of taking a three-pointer at the power forward spot, and he more than fulfills Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster's needs. Juancho won't have as big as a role as he did in Hustle Part 1, but being a supporting cast member next to main characters Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, Scotty Barnes, and OG Ananobi should be a great fit. Also, don't forget how the development staff and coaching staff of the Toronto Raptors gets the most out of its players. The protagonist in this even more thrilling version of Hustle, though, is Scotty Barnes. Meanwhile, filling in for Anthony Edwards is the villain Joel Embiid. In all seriousness, after Kawhi Leonard was the main option in Toronto's run to winning the country of Canada's first NBA championship three years ago, everyone in the city of Toronto, and also fans who know what they're talking about around the NBA, are going to have their attention heavily focused on whether or not 2022's Rookie of the Year can achieve the tall task of replacing the presence of the 2019 Finals MVP in the claw over the next few years. Scotty's more than capable of developing into that type of player, and from everything I saw from him watching 20 plus games in person of him this past season, future superstar is written all over the kid. I'm excited to see him lead the franchise on and off the court for the next decade. The reason I'm so confident in that statement is because of the maturity level in terms of the poise on and off the court and his basketball IQ, which is wise beyond his years. Barnes has special playmaking and ball handling for his 6'7 height, allowing him to see over the top of the opposing defense, while his 7'3 reach and long strides allow him to take up ground in Giannis Adetokounmpo-esque fashion. 
Mix that in with his natural feel for the game, fluid post-scoring for his lack of pro experience, and the fact that he's a ruthless competitor, the soon-to-be 21-year-old is already damn good. Expect Barnes to make that fact clear for everyone across the association as the 2022-23 season progresses. Scariest part about Scott is that I haven't even mentioned the two factors which give him the most potential, his already top-of-the-league caliber wing defense, and the very evident upside the kid's shown off shooting the basketball from distance. In defensive rating among small forwards, Scotty was only behind elite stoppers in Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Andrew Wiggins, Mikhail Bridges, and Royce O'Neal. It's incredibly rare for a rookie to rank that highly. On the other side of the court, while Scotty only took 2.6 three-point attempts each game, and he made a somewhat below average 30.1% of those shots, the latter's not a terrible mark, and considering how good of a slasher that Barnes can be, he only needs to raise his deep range percentage a bit for defenses to respect him from out there. To sum things up, you've got a well-rounded, beastly talent in Scotty Barnes to watch steadily develop into a top 5-10 to 10 NBA player at the very least in the next few years. It's a plot starring Bo Cruz that's going to make hundreds of millions in profit and may actually have a chance of being better than the first version of Adam Sandler's Hustle. You can't forget about another rising phenom in the 23-year-old's Precious Achua and the re-signing of big men who provide solid bench support in Chris Boucher and Thaddeus Young. Plus, the selection of Christian Coloco with the 53rd overall pick gives the Raptors legit big men depth, something they didn't come close to having last season. In addition to Wancho, another underrated free agent cop in the man who used to kill the Raptors when he was in Washington is Otto Porter Jr., a fan favorite in Golden State. Porter Jr. gained the nickname from fans in the Bay Area of Automatic, on both ends of the floor, Porter Jr. was very reliable for a team that just won its fourth NBA championship. There's many thrilling storylines in this Raptor season, but Otto's added presence on the perimeter will be right up there with any of them. Maybe I left it out, but what's the most exciting part about Hustle 2, in your opinion? Best answer gets next video shoutout, and the top five commenters with the most shoutouts by September 21st earn free NBA merchandise of their choosing, so compete in Community Speaks by leaving your take on today's question. Yesterday, I asked who took the bigger L between Brad Stevens and Sean Marks. Go Bo Sox earns the shoutout for saying I'm with Swoo. Stevens has shown how brilliant he is. I can't see him being foolish enough to offer up JB for KZ straight up. I don't believe this report. Thanks for that take, Bo Sox but the trade which Stevens offered up was reported by The Athletic. Just wanted to clear that up.